What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is basically a video focusing on essential technology for students to have. So I'm not going to go over everything in super detailed like a tech expert would. Um, I'm going to give a brief overview of stuff that's relevant for you to know. First, let's start off with what is arguably the most important device for a student to have. And that is a computer. What laptop should you buy? First off, I don't recommend any cheap laptop because the thing is I've tried those and they just break or they wear down so easily and you end up buying another one and just spending more money than you would have if you just bought a good computer in the first place. So first let's go over laptop sizes because for a student that's probably the most important thing you should consider. Important sizes you want to be aware of is the 10 to 12 inch screen size, the 13.3 inch screen size, the 15.6 inch screen size, and the 17.3 inch screen size. So let's first start off with the smallest one. So here is an HP Elite Book, and as you can see it's really thin, really light, and just really affordable. So if you get a laptop in the 10 to 12 inch size, 12, 10 to 12 inch screen size that is, it's just really portable. Comparing that to a 13.3 inch, you can see the size difference here. This feels like it's about two pounds. This feels like it's over three pounds. So this you can literally move around however you want. This has a little bit more heft to it. So when considering a laptop, you really want to consider screen size, both for the screen size itself and for the weight. So here's a comparison between a 15.6 inch screen and a 13.3 inch screen. As you can see, the 15.6 is a lot bigger. It is a lot heavier. This is about 4.4 pounds. So it's definitely getting to be a little heavy. It's going to make a dent in your backpack weight for sure. This is still in the light range. So it still feels light. I can still move it around, hold it with one hand. This feels definitely, this is putting some, giving my wrist a workout. A 17.3, this is like really hard to hold. It's probably like six pounds and it's absolutely massive screen. Um, I don't recommend the 17.3 inch for any student unless you have really special circumstances. Really I'd recommend a 13.3 or 15.6. Most people 13.3. Other things that you should know are that when choosing the laptop, make sure that it has an SSD, a solid state drive, rather than an HDD, which is a hard disk drive. And that's just because for the average user, just having an SSD makes everything run so much faster. So I highly recommend having an SSD. The last thing I need to tell you about is battery life. And when deciding what kind of laptop you want, don't just trust the battery life that a description or anything else tells you. What you want to actually do is get the laptop in your hand or you're at the store. You want to look in the bottom right and look at the battery icon. And that's a much better indicator of the general amount of time you'll have with this laptop. Like the hours, I mean like three hours, four hours. Or you can just look on YouTube or on other sites of people who actually own the laptop and they'll tell you how many hours you can expect from the laptop's battery life. And now for the age old question, Mac or PC? And for that I would just say if you don't want to deal with any hassles or you don't want to search for like good deals on a Windows computer, you don't want your Bluetooth crashing randomly or your computer randomly restarting or a Windows update coming along and just decreasing your battery life by two hours miraculously, I would just go with an Apple. It's safe and it's not going to cause you any problems. And for Apple, whatever computer you get, you know you're actually getting a good quality computer. On the other hand, if you're willing to do a little bit more research, you're willing to deal with the small gripes that come here and there, you're probably going to get a better deal for a better computer on Windows. So it's really just if you're willing to deal with the gripes of Windows. And obviously also which one you're more familiar with. If you've been using Windows all your life, you're probably going to stick with it. So I've had a lot of experience with Windows laptops. And for me personally, the laptop that I recommend for most people is this Dell Inspiron 7000 series. And for most people I'd recommend 13 inch, so this one right here. Like I said, the 13 inch hits the sweet spot. And also this is like really affordable. If you look for deals, you can get this for like 500 to $650. So I won't bore you with too many of the details, but basically you can see it's a 13.3 inch screen, it's touch screen, it even flips to 
act as a tablet. Um, so it has like two in one functionality. We can take out the stylus and start writing. Um, it has all the required ports. One of the problem with Apple computers is they barely have any ports. Like this has HDMI, USB, SD card readers, really anything a student would need. This laptop basically has it. Um, in terms of specs, the specs are really good. Like I said, with the SSD, it has an SSD processor. I won't bug you with that. What's really cool is the newer editions of this laptop. This is actually an older edition. Um, I think it's like two years old. The newer edition, there's these bezels. It might be harder to see, but see how there's screen? And then there's bezel around the screen? The newer edition of these laptops remove this bezel. So it's basically all screen. And if you can kind of imagine what that does, you basically have less body. There's none of this bezel. So the laptop ends up being even lighter and sleeker looking. So the newer edition is even better than this. And I really like this laptop. And so I think the second most important device for a student to have is a phone. And you really want a smartphone because it just allows you to do so much and be so much more efficient. So personally, I would recommend the Samsung Note series. And it's basically the same thing as a Samsung Galaxy phone, where it has a good screen, really high resolution, really good colors, uh, great form factor, great weight, um, really strong processor, and it has all the stuff. The only thing extra that it has is this pen. And basically, you just pull this pen out from the bottom and you start taking notes on whatever you need. And as you can imagine, that's really useful if you're a student. So this is the phone I recommend. Um, if price is an issue, again, it shouldn't be because there's all these plans and stuff um, to get this phone for basically free. But if it's still somehow an issue or that doesn't work out, I recommend getting the older editions like the Samsung S7 phone or the, even the S6. They're all pretty solid phones, other than the Samsung phone that blew up, uh, don't get that one. The same goes for the iPhone. So the iPhone X might be overkill, but there's the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 7. And the iPhone, it's basically the same thing as Samsung now. Uh, they used to be pretty different. And for all of these phones, you can decide whether to get the regular base edition, like the iPhone 8, or the larger screen, which is the iPhone 8 Plus. Same thing with the Samsung. You can get the Samsung S7 or the S7 Edge, which is just a bigger screen. So this is the Note 8. This is the Galaxy S7, which is a little older. And please, if you're gonna get a phone, make sure you get a case and a screen protector. So this has a screen protector, it's hard to see. You don't even notice it, but so many times I've seen people drop their phone and it just wastes hundreds of dollars. And repairing these screens isn't cheap if you're gonna repair them. So most people just walk around with a broken screen, which kind of really sucks. So I highly recommend getting a screen protector. Please do. Here are iPhones. This is the iPhone 8, I think the regular edition. There's also the Plus, or you can get um, older iPhones because they're just so much cheaper. And one accessory that I highly recommend is a power bank for your phone. This basically lets you charge your phone on the go. So say you're in class, you're on your phone, and you realize you only have 5% battery left, but you still have like three more hours of class. So this allows you to charge your phone in that situation. So all you basically do, this already has battery and it's basically a battery and you basically just plug in your phone and it starts charging. All you really need to do is try it once and you'll probably be sold. Again, not like I'm selling you anything here, um, but it's really useful. One easy but really useful accessory that I highly recommend is a flash drive. And I don't recommend just getting a one or two gigabyte flash drive if you, because if you just pay like a couple extra dollars, you can literally turn that one gigabyte into 16 gigabytes. And the next thing I recommend are headphones and earbuds. So these are Bose Quiet Comfort headphones and I got these for free or else I wouldn't buy them myself. But now that I have them, like it's really convenient just to have noise canceling. Like once you put them on you, it's really hard to hear anything else. And you don't have to get these, honestly, there's a lot of other cheaper alternates, but any headphones will do, honestly. But I really like these, especially for a student, their weight and their comfort. Um, they're pretty awesome. So the last thing I wanna talk about are calculators. And so there's scientific and graphing calculators. Scientific calculators are good because they're cheaper and because for certain examinations, they're not gonna want you to use a graphing calculator. 
because you can just do stuff on them, like store data. So they're gonna have you use a scientific calculator. Graphing calculators you can use at home or if you just want like obviously graphing operations, um, but they're more expensive. So for scientific calculators, I've been through a bunch and I can definitively say the best one is the TI-30XS. The reason I like this one is mostly because the order of operations is terrible on other calculators. Like you can go through the process and do everything right and you'll still end up with a wrong answer. If that's ever happened to you, then get this calculator because it will alleviate that immediately. Because the information is stored in multiple lines, which some calculators don't have, and it makes good use of the answer function, you'll understand that better once you get the calculator. It just stores the information and uses it so well to make making errors a lot more difficult. On the graphing calculator side, you've probably heard of this calculator. It's really popular. It's the TI-84 Plus Silver Edition. So this is a graphing calculator. It basically has all the functions you need as for the average student. And yeah, it's just a solid graphing calculator. So I don't want to dwell too much on either of those because this video is already taking up so much time. So this is an iPad Pro. The only reason I have this is it was part of our tuition fee at Yale. Um, and I don't really see the real use of this that a laptop or a phone can't do. So I don't recommend really that you need an iPad or a smartwatch or any of these other extra things. I think people go a little overboard. Some people swear by the iPad or a tablet. Um, for me, if you have a laptop and a phone, that's really sufficient. The iPad is in the middle space where I don't know what it could do that you can't do with a good slim laptop or a phone, but that's just my opinion. Um, maybe a smartwatch is the key to getting A's. You let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.